What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic here with Majestex. So I get a lot of questions about lighting um, when you're dealing with things like the SmartThings Hub or you wanna deal with automation. So today I'm gonna try to cover some beginner, intermediate, and advanced lighting options, so stay tuned. So I'm gonna start with a disclaimer that I am not an electrician. I'm just giving you tips and advice, but you can use this video as a general guide. Now, as I mentioned in my home automation guide, and you can go back and watch that if you haven't already, that's got a lot of good info in it, especially about lighting. But I did kind of touch on some options that you have when it comes to Z-Wave or even Zigbee lighting. So when it comes to lighting, you really have four major options, and I'm gonna rank these in order of difficulty. So let's get started with the easiest option, and that's gonna be the connected bulbs. These are really, really simple to work with all you're going to do is replace your light bulb with it pair it with your hub and then you're just going to control it with the hub like using your phone or your voice if you have alexa with smart things or something like that however a major downside to using bulbs is that if somebody hits the light switch you're going to lose power to your bulb and you can't connect to it to control it now when you're in that situation that's when you kind of have to be creative and maybe put like a lock on a switch or something like that or you just use a separate switch, like maybe just a push button you get from the store, or you can just tell people in your house to not turn the light off. But that's a pretty basic setup. Very simple to understand and easy to use. And speaking of bulbs, another popular option is Philips Hue. So if you're interested in buying Philips Hue bulbs, you're gonna need a Philips Hue bridge. So the bulbs actually connect directly to the bridge. They don't connect directly to smart things or any other smart hub. However, smart hubs like smart things and wink do connect to the Philips Hue bridge. And unfortunately, you're still gonna have the issue with the light switches. If you turn your light switch off where the bulb is plugged in, you're not gonna be able to connect to the bulb. But the big advantage to Philips Hue is that you get a lot of different color options so you can set different moods and scenes and things like that with your bulbs. So if you're really interested in Philips Hue, it does work really well with a smart hub like smart things. The second option is just as easy, which is to buy an actual plug-in module um, which is just going to be an outlet that you're going to plug into your existing wall outlet. So in the case of lighting, you're just going to plug your lamp into it. And they actually do sell dimmable modules that you can plug a lamp into that will actually dim the light um, using the outlet. So moving on to some more intermediate options, and that's going to be wall switches. So when it comes to Z-Wave wall switches, you have a lot of different options with those because so many different companies make light switches. Um, you can have an on-off switch or you can have a Z-Wave dimmer. It's up to you. The very first thing you need to consider Consider is whether or not you have a neutral wire in the box and the neutral wire is usually going to be a white wire or a bundle of white wires in the back of the box and you need those because the switch is going to be powered on all the time now there are some z-wave switches out there that don't require a neutral wire but I don't really recommend them because most of them don't work with LED bulbs and if you're in that situation where you don't have a neutral wire then you can get kind of creative using um, some smart bulbs along with outlets so obviously when it comes to installing light switches you're going to have to do an actual install. So another thing to consider when you're going to install these light switches is the amperage on the switch that you're going to buy. So you have to make sure that the load of your lights in the room where you're putting this switch is not going to exceed the amperage or the wattage of that switch. So if you're ready to do one of these installs, if you've never done it before, I'll show you the tools that I use to get these done. Um, the very first thing and one of the most important tools is going to be a voltage tester. So the voltage tester is going to be used for two different things. One, it's going to be able to tell you which wires are powers and the other thing it's gonna be used for is to keep you from being shocked. So when you turn the power off, you can test the wires to make sure there's no voltage running through so you don't actually get shocked or worse, even killed. You're also gonna need a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, um, a small flathead screwdriver, which would be used to remove existing wires out of the back of a switch if you need to, uh, wire nuts, some extra wire, pliers, wire strippers, painter's tape, uh, a new wall plate if you need one, and a voltmeter. Another thing to keep in mind if you're gonna be replacing a switch with a Z-Wave switch is making sure that you're not putting a dimmer on a ceiling fan. There are a lot of situations where you'll have a dual gang box, one switch controls a light, and the other switch controls the fan motor, you definitely want to make sure that the switch you're buying for the fan is an on-off switch. Um, you will destroy the motor if you try to use a dimming switch on it. So the very first situation I want to cover when replacing switches is going to be a single pole switch installation. And that just simply means that you have a very basic 
light switch that's just controlling a set of lights or a single light. In that case, you don't have two or more light switches that are controlling that light. There's only one light switch. Now, if you do have two or three light switches that are controlling that source, that's gonna be a three-way or four-way situation, and I'll get to that a little bit later. So the very first thing you wanna do is shut your power off. Go ahead and pull the switch out so you can get access to the wires, and then you wanna determine which wires are what. So the two wires that are kind of difficult to distinguish when you're doing this for the first time is the line and the load wires. And the load wire is basically gonna be the wire that's going to the light. And the line wire is gonna be also known as the hot wire or the wire that's hot whenever the switch has power. Um, so that's not gonna be a switched wire, it's just always gonna be hot at all times. So once you pull the wall switch out, you can turn the power back on and very, very carefully, because you're dealing with live wires, very carefully test to see which wires are on and which wires are off when you flip the switch. So when the switch is off, you'll have one wire that's gonna be hot, that should be your line wire. And when you flip the switch on, you'll see that both wires are hot. The wire that's switched is gonna be your load wire. So that's the wire that's going to the light. So that's how you determine which one is which. The other wire you're gonna need is the neutral wire, as I mentioned, which is gonna be a bundle of wires in the back of your box. And then the last wire you need is the ground wire, which is usually just gonna be connected connected with a bare copper wire onto your existing switch already. So you're just gonna move these wires over to your new switch. Another option you have when you're doing a single pole installation is a micro switch. Now, these are a little bit more difficult to understand because it's not as straightforward as wiring up a regular light switch, but a micro switch is basically gonna sit in between the load coming from the switch that you have there and going to the light. So with a micro switch, it's gonna share the hot wire that the switch is already using. So in that case, you'll likely need to add an additional wire so that the line is being shared by the original switch and the micro switch. Then you're also gonna add a neutral wire that's gonna wire to the existing neutral wires that you have in there. Then you're gonna take the load wire that's going to your existing switch move that over to the micro switch and then on the micro switch you'll have an aux wire that aux wire is going to replace where the load wire was on the original switch so this is a pretty basic setup for the most part once you get a grasp of how it works so micro switches are going to work really well if you just want to keep your existing wall plate and you don't want to actually change the look of anything all right so now on to some advanced lighting now advanced lighting is going to consist of three and four way lighting situations so as i mentioned earlier that's going to be when you have two or three light switches that are controlling one light. Now, if you have like four light switches or more, it's going to pretty much be the same situation as far as wiring goes for the most part. Now, three and four way lighting is always difficult for people to understand. And that's just because there are several different ways that you can wire a three way switch. So I'm actually going to cover two of the most common ways that it's done. So if yours is different, hopefully it wouldn't be that much different and it'll give you a general understanding of how it works. Now, the first thing you need to keep in mind when you're going to wire up a switch into a three-way situation is that any z-wave switch is going to require line neutral and load to all be in the same box now unfortunately most of the three-way setups that i see do not have all three of these wires in one box but there are ways around it now you may get lucky if you have a two gang box and that's because usually in a two gang box you're going to find a line wire because the other switch that's in the box with that switch is probably getting line so you can use that line to pop Power the micro switch. So let's start with one of the most common three-way setups. So you're going to have line, neutral, and ground coming into box one. And then you're going to have two traveler wires, which are going to be connected to switch two. So you're going to have a total of five wires there. So on the other end, you have the two traveler wires coming from switch one. You're going to have your load, which is connected to the light. You're going to have your neutral in the back of the box and your ground wire is going to be connected to that switch as well. Now, in this situation, notice the line and the load are in two different boxes. Um, now, the easiest way to tackle this situation is going to be to buy a regular Z-Wave switch switch and to buy an accessory Z-Wave switch. So in this situation, switch one is where you're gonna wire the accessory switch. So the way that an accessory switch works, if you haven't already seen the home automation guide, is that it doesn't actually carry a load, you're just giving it power. So what you're gonna do in box one is disconnect all the wires from the existing switch that you have there. You're gonna take the line wire and the red traveler wire that's going 
two switch two and tie those together with a wire nut. You're gonna take the black wire that's going between both switches and cap it off on both ends because we're not going to use it. Then you're gonna take your accessory switch, wire that into the neutral, also wire that into the line wire and then wire it into the ground wire as well. Now you can go to box two and box two is where you're wiring the regular Z-Wave switch which is gonna require four wires. So in box two, you're gonna take the red wire, that's gonna be your line wire, so you're gonna connect that to line on the new Z-Wave switch. You're gonna take the black wire, if you haven't already, go ahead and cap that off. You're gonna take the load wire that's coming from the light, connect that to your load, then you're gonna take the neutral wire, connect that, and also connect the ground wire. So once you have everything all wired up, you can turn your power back on, and you're gonna test to make sure that turning the light switch on on switch two is actually turning the light on and off. And then you can also take this time to pair both of the switches with your hub. Once both of the switches are added, you have two different options when it comes to linking these switches together. One option is to use a mini moat. Um, it's made by Aeon Labs. That's the most common way to do this. And the process for linking them together is really, really simple. You're just gonna hit the button on the remote that's gonna link these devices together. Then you're gonna go to the regular Z-Wave switch, double tap that, then go to the accessory switch and double tap that. Once you do that, that's done. They're gonna be associated with each other. So that way they're linked up together so that when one switch is off, the other one knows that it's off and vice versa. And if your regular switch is a dimmer, you can actually use the accessory switch to dim the other light as well. So they link up perfectly together this way. The other alternative, if you either don't have a mini mode or you just need to get something up and running in the meantime, um, is to actually let smart things do the association for you. And it's not gonna do a Z-Wave association, but the way it works is you can simply just go into smart lighting and that's gonna allow you to just go into the app and say, hey, when I turn the accessory switch on, turn the main switch on, as well as turning it off. And that's gonna associate both of them together. That way when one's off, the other's off and vice versa. However, there's no way to get the accessory switch to actually dim the other switch if it's a dimmer. But it does work fairly well letting smart things do it for you. Now there is gonna be a slightly longer delay because you're actually letting the hub do it. So it's gotta talk to the hub. The hub has to tell it what to do. It's not gonna be as fast as a direct Z-Wave association. So that was the very first scenario when it comes to three-way lighting, which is one of the most common. Um, now that is probably the worst type of situation that you can be in just because you don't have all three wires that you need in the same box. But using a Z-Wave switch along with an accessory or what's also known as an add-on switch is the best way to do it. And the second situation that I wanna talk about is when you actually do have line wires in both boxes. So that means in one box you have line, load, and neutral, and then the other box you have line and neutral because you don't need load in both boxes. If that's the case, you can actually use a micro switch in this situation. So the way that you're gonna wire the micro switch here is very similar to the way that you wire it to a single pole light switch. Now, once you know which side has the load, you can go ahead and close up the other side because we're not gonna use it. We're gonna actually leave the traveler wires and everything in place like they are. The only thing that we're gonna do in the box where the switch is that has the load is simply connect it just like we connected it to a single pole light switch. So all you're gonna do is run a wire for line to your micro switch, run your wire for your neutral, and then you're gonna take the load wire off of the existing three-way and connect that into the load terminal on your micro switch. And then you're gonna take the aux wire and run that to where the load wire was on the original three-way switch. Now you do need to follow the directions that you have for your micro switch to ensure that you're actually wiring that wire into the right terminal because it may be different from some micro switches, especially one like Aeon Labs. You definitely wanna double check your wiring. Now in scenario two, you can still use a regular Z-Wave switch and an accessory switch. It's gonna work the exact same way. Now GE does sell an add-on switch where you can actually use the traveler wires. I've never actually done this just because I prefer having it be done wireless through Z-Wave, just using a regular accessory switch and having that switch paired to the other switch. Now these companies do make double micro switches which is basically a micro switch that allows you to control two separate loads with one switch. So in that case, you're really just gonna wire it up the same way. The only difference is that you're gonna have two aux wires and two load wires. So you just have to make sure that they're hooked up the right way and they will work just fine. Now, when you're using some of these different light switches and these other devices like micro switches and things like that, the actual device type does not work well natively with smart things if you're using smart things. However, there are a lot of cool people on the forums that have actually created device types 
for these switches to allow them to work properly. Now I will do a separate video on how you add a custom device type and how you use virtual switches to control a double switch or how you just simply control a micro switch. So stay tuned for that video. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I appreciate it. I know it was a long video. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me if you found it helpful. Post your comments and your questions in the comment section. As always, I'll respond to your questions and I'll see you guys in the next video.